How you guys doing? Come on over that here. That guy right over there is challenging one of them to an arm wrestle. Come on over here. No, I don't even have big muscles. I'm just fucking <laughs> out with this guy. Do you work out? No, I, don't, I never worked out a day in my life. Take off the shirt and see. Well, well, you still see my muscles. Yeah, I do. Absolutely. All right. Take your shirt off. Ben, ben, take your shirt off. Ben, this is, ben what the, is the gay porn or something? No, what are you guys filming? No. no yeah, like, I'm, okay, you're freaking, you're freaking me out. You're freaking me right now. But I'll tell you what. If you beat me in an arm wrestle, if you beat me in an arm wrestle, I'll buy you. I'm not going to look quite at so <laughs> I'm pretty weak. All right, I'm ready? Right. One, two, go! <laughs> Come on, Travis! Oh, oh, oh yeah! yeah! <laughs> One, two, three, four, go! Come on, Travis! Trash, trash, trash! Oh! oh. oh. Oh! 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 Yeah! Oh! 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 Bathurst, New Brunswick. Well, we went off to a pretty exciting start. The uh, ring truck broke down uh, at some point, and I think the ring never showed up. And this is like the ring, the lights, the sound, everything is all in one truck. Most of the crew w w was good as gold anyway, so I didn't even, even really have to tell most of them. But, but I did tell everyone anyway that everybody was going to have to chip in on the ring because we thought it was going to be quite late. We thought that every one of us, and I'm not above helping to put up a ring, neither is Gary, neither is Mike, and we were all going to chip in and get the ring done. It was the first time that I had to talk to a couple of people, especially Marissa LeBlanc, about uh, keeping busy and, and, you know, don't just sit there when somebody else is working in front of you. Work ethic isn't a problem with Marissa. You know, I've never seen anyone train in the gym harder than her. Honestly, she, she gives it. Marissa is a follower. If she's not given a list of details and duties, she's, she doesn't step up and take charge. Sorry, We're very limited in, in what we can give you for camera time. And from a ratings perspective, we would want you on TV as much as possible, but you're barely going to be on TV at all. And you're, you're really not stepping up to the forefront on the reality side either. You're kind of shying away from the cameras a little bit. You gotta. I thought I was kind of in front you, of them. You gotta get in there and you know have things to say and and give you know, reactions and opinions. Well, and I have been behind the scenes. You know what I mean. Yeah, behind, but you're not always you're not always there. No, no, no. But you're not always there to see the stuff. Like, remember, I'm just I learning as I go. I'm the, I'm the ears and eyes of it. I know everything that's going on all the time, even if I'm not there. You know, everything's reported to me, so I know everything. Uh, did you want so, a smaller size? Uh, or I just, as long as you know both sides I just story. want you to be on camera as much as possible because you're the prettiest girl we have. Marissa does have a lot of respect for Peter, uh, for Pete's knowledge in the fitness industry and for training athletes and stuff like that. And she really, I think, wants to please Peter uh, and perform the way she does. But I don't think she really has any clue about the wrestling industry at all. I mean, I don't know what else I can do. Now I feel like a shit. But the way I work in a job is, you know, everybody has a job description, you do your tasks. Well, I thought this was what my job was. And then to hear after that people are saying, well, you're not helping out, you're not helping out. And even though I would have asked once in a while, and yeah, lately I just stopped asking because every time I ask, it's like, no, 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 everything's good, everything's good. She's being paid more than most of the wrestlers. And, uh, you know, at the end of the week, uh, it, it's, it comes down to where you're worth your paycheck. And uh, she's doing a good job at what she does, but, but you know, I've been trying to stress from day one that it's a team, this is a whole a team effort, you know. Bottom line, I needed a kick in the ass because, but, but, <laughs> I was oblivious to it. I wasn't even thinking It's not the first kick that. in the ass I've given you, by the way. I had a few slaps in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Now I feel like they think I'm doing it just to kind of impress, which is not the point. I'm just glad I can do it because now people are letting me do it. I felt like a piece of shit because, you know, if I'd have known I could have been doing this, I would have been offering even more.
<laughs> Listen, Scott, we're going to this restaurant, and he's the sponsor. You can't be running around picking scraps off everybody's plates in there. I, I understand. I won't be running around. Don't, I won't embarrass you. I'm just, I'm just kidding, pal. Don't worry. I don't son. think you are. <laughs> <laughs> sure, he, you know, he, the whole thing is to save money in any business. It doesn't really matter how much money you make. It's how much money you save. But all he does is he's either eating leftover food or oatmeal, and... You know, he says, well, uh, he's ripped and, uh, you know, he's got abs and that. But that's just because there's just nothing else there. When you're so skinny, you're going to see what's underneath. He, he looks like an x-ray machine or something was run over him. Well, I am going to sit down here at Ryan's and have a delicious meal. I'm going to pay for my meal like a, like a grown man and uh, enjoy it. You're not going to pick at our leftovers like a vulture? Well, no. <laughs> the diet on the road is... You want to eat as cheap as you can possibly eat. And so today I just went to the grocery store and uh, usually I, I eat tuna, but they didn't, tuna today at the grocery store was $1.89 and usually you're paying like 89 cents. So that's an extra dollar per can. But they had chicken on for 89 cents. I'm eating my uh, oats because carbohydrates that carb up for tonight so I have some energy and uh, there's no better source than oatmeal. So uh, I can't cook here. So I just got a fork and a the whole bag and I just, uh, my bag of oatmeal fell over. And <laughs> now I'm trying to save the precious oatmeal because you know, that's like half a meal right there that uh, fell out. So you gotta... When I fired Sidewinder, I had already made the arrangements to uh, replace him with Tony Ar Armstrong. When I called him, he said, oh my God, I have to work. I don't know if I can make it. And he says, no, 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 leave it with me. I'll be there. And uh, when he said that, I knew that he would be there. I got a call last night at work. Um, apparently, a guy got sent home for unprofessional conduct. He asked me if I could take a spot right away. He asked me if I could be in uh, Moncton for 8 a.m. in the morning. Now, the thing is, I kind of pulled a little trick to get off work early. I got these pills, they're called niacin. And the side effect of the overdose, your skin gets right flush and you get right warm in the face and on the forehead. You turn red, kind of look like a beet. They're kind of like this t-shirt, actually. I kind of did it and you can see the boys and they're, they're the good boys at work and they're kind of... 45 minutes later, I'm on my way to Moncton. We're hard on each other on the road. It's all in fun. You know, we call it ribbing. And when you, uh, a lot of these guys have never been exposed to it because they've never been on the road, but when you spend half your life on the road, like a lot of us have, you go crazy. You just start to do the silliest things to annoy each other. So, uh, what are you doing here? Uh, what I'm about to do is uh, pull the rim on steam. If you remember, Ken fell. I put locks on his bag. Fish, here we go. Oh, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> Get it. <laughs> no, I got it. Okay. okay. <laughs> that was so pathetic. Just now I was thinking, my, I'm feeling peckish. I think I'll have a drink of my water. And then I was looking at my water thinking, what is swimming around in my water? What's it, what's it? I can almost guarantee you this is the handiwork of Tony Armstrong. <laughs> There's a goldfish in my water. That's tremendous. <laughs> There's a fish, a fish, fish in your water. <laughs> A lot of times when you're on the road for uh, long periods of time, I mean, there's a lot of travel time. I mean, to do a four, five, six hour trip is actually not that far. This particular trip, uh, we were heading out to, um, I think we were heading out to Cape Breton or somewhere out there. It was a fairly long trip. And uh, we, we weren't wrestling that night, we were just using it as a travel day. So I pop into the van, I've been drinking all morning because it's our day off, get in the van and I look at my cues. I'm like, I bet you I can out drink you. I can drink my cues. So we get in the van and we take off to, to Cape Breton and I'm pounding beer back into me like it's, you know, going out of style. We hit, uh, we hit Toro and I just, I'm done. I, I drank like, you know, my entire case of beer and I'm passed out in the back seat. We get all the way up to uh, North City and I crawl to the back of the van. It's a big old vomit because I went from the air conditioned environment of the van to the scaldering heat, plus I'm hammered. I go into the liquor chick in, uh, in North Sydney and I walk in there, all the boys are in there already getting some food and everybody's giving me these weird stares in my face and I think I must have puke on my face, you know, a little bit of stuff. So I go in the bathroom, I look in the mirror, and I'm like, oh, 
fuck. I have the Sharpie painted on, mustache with the curly beard, a little goatee going on, and a big old swastika on my forehead. Uh, and I was like, I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, the day that Sidewinder got fired, um, apparently Julian came around and said, oh, you know, I get a spot because of side shit's, side shit's fuck ups. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Well, what can I say? I mean, you guys saw it. Sidewinder was, I guess, too lazy and not professional enough. And <laughs> that was a hell of a reality check. Peter sent him the fuck home. Uh, we're not going to use you the rest of the tour. You're done tonight. And until you can be mature enough to act like a professional, you won't be part of this organization. This was supposed to be my last day on the tour to the show tomorrow. And uh, because Sidewinder got kicked off, I'm, I get to wrestle the show Sunday. So technically, I inherited of his match and his money and his TV spot, so I really can't complain. I had a lot of faith in Sidewinder. Uh, I wouldn't say that I ever thought he was anything really special. I just thought he was special for this area. Uh, you know, Sidewinder and Julian are really, really tight. And then uh, after Sidewinder, you know, uh, got let go, um, uh, Julian, you know, kind of jumped teams or it appeared that way. But you know what, that's typical for this business. Um, you have to remember that we are a team but we are also individuals and every individual on that team is you know trying to climb that ladder and the higher you go on the ladder further you get up on the roster um, or closer you get to main event the more money you make uh, technically if you if you say ring general so to speak that would be uh, peter smith i mean uh, he is a huge part of this whole production uh, he is technically uh, the boss, you know what I mean? People can talk about Peter Smith however they want. The guy's been all over the world. He knows what he's talking about. And the reason he teach, you know, he's hard on people is because this is a hard business. If you're not hard enough, if you're not being professional, really you don't belong here. As you guys know, somebody, uh, somebody from the crew was let go last night. I thought he was a, I thought he was a downer to everybody. Uh, I know he was to me. He was dropping the ball every chance he got. Uh, and what he doesn't realize is he was uh, a guy that we intended to hand the ball to a lot over the next couple of years, and, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen now. I guess wrestling, more than most professions, it's kind of natural selection. If you're a leader in other parts of the world, you know, before you become a wrestler, you're going to be a leader in, in the wrestling industry as well. I never asked to be a leader. I've kind of been thrown into that role, maybe because I came into it a little older than most people. And uh, I'm an accountable person. If, if, if I think that I've fucked up, I'll do, you know, I'll admit that I fucked up and I'll, I'll do what I have to do to, uh, to make the necessary changes to fix things. Zero, the zero hometown, was over. zero, the hometown yeah, boy was over. very over. Yeah, yeah, I thought that. Well, you heard them. The zero chant, zero. With Even the when they started with the savage socks, it would end in a zero chat. Yeah, yeah. What was like in the hometown crowd? It's good. As much as any other crowd, except to see some familiar faces. You guys impressed down there? Thank you. That was awesome. Thanks, that was man. awesome. Oh, really thanks, good. Man. I didn't see the finish, yeah. unfortunately, but I saw everything. Yeah. Every, almost everything before that, it was fucking phenomenal. Good stuff. When I started putting this tour together, uh, from a talent perspective, one of the first names I wrote down was Zero, Jeff Bennett. I mean, he's one of those guys, uh, when he was trained, he was a natural. I mean, uh, Peter Smith had trained him back in the day, I think three, four, five years ago, I'm not sure. What I like about Jeff, if he says he'll be there at 11 o'clock, he's there at 11 o'clock. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. He's dependable. Like, we gave him the duty to uh, make sure the ring was set up. Uh, basically, he was the guy who was in charge of the whole ring. And he did a fantastic job. I mean, he knows that ring inside and out. What's it like when everybody in the hometown is trying to check zero over and over again? <sighs> it's new. It's less work to have to go home. Oh, my. Oh, we're doing a rechant. Okay. <laughs> 
can save me trouble, but then again, you can't buy as much time. As opposed to a fan you're not familiar with, you can kind of like slowly build them up and then do a little thing, so build them up a bit more, really get them quicker, right? But otherwise, that it was great. The crowd was, was absolutely electric at the end of the night, and uh, this is the first time I've actually been had an opportunity to be in the ring with James Mason. And, you know, this guy is such a master at what he does. He literally had the crowd in the palm of his hand. He had them chanting, we want more, we want more. He could have held them there as long as he wanted to. Darren Harvey told me if he wanted them to be there the next morning chanting that, he could have done it. You want them leaving wanting more. If you leave them satisfied, they got no reason to come back. All show business, leave them wanting more. So that means if we came back here, we'll fill the fucking place. They, if they want more, it means they loved the show. The reason we don't usually go back out when the crowd is, is uh, chanting for more is because by the time you get there, they're quiet and, and you've lost that big pop. You want to leave on a big pop. But the big pops lasted so long I mean, literally five minutes into it, we thought, we have to go back home. First of all, every single one of you toothless French hillbillies, you sit down before I take the club out of every single one of you. I don't give a fuck, man, if you want more. We had them. You're one big fucking man. I told fuck. In the fucking slab. Like, Whoa, oh, fuck. Oh. 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 Time he wasn't there. Thanks, brother. Replay. Oh. Good I don't know. Oh. What did you say to the crowd in French, Gary? Va chier, vous êtes plein de marde. What does that mean? Pretty much you're full of shit. Oh, okay. Hold you. Yeah. And what? The only thing I know, they fucking popped. <laughs> I can't even explain. You know, I'm back in the groove. I'm just back in the groove, man. And it's just an amazing feeling. Just kicking my ass that I just didn't stay busy 100% of the time for the last five years. I'm sorry, Bruce. you guys go back. Normally I wouldn't, but it just felt like it, to be honest with you. And the fact that they cheered that long, what the hell? What the hell? Normally I wouldn't, and I wouldn't even advise it because it could have fell flat in its ass. It just, something felt, something felt right. There's such a hot crowd, and they love those three guys so much. What the hell? Give them a little two minutes more, could make all the difference. We get to the ring and there's no microphone. So we're looking around trying to make eye contact with staff, and finally Andrew Tidby, thankfully, made eye contact with, with me at the right time and realized I didn't have a microphone. He ran it over to me, and, uh, and we just winged it. Uh, my name is Andrew Tibby. I'm one of the camera guys uh, on this shoot. And actually, tonight was actually one of the most interesting nights of them all because everything that happened at the end was made up right on the spot. Uh, the crowd, they did not want to leave. They wanted to see more and they were desperate for it. So look, when the guys are up on stage here, I was hearing on the, I was hearing on the, on the, on the walkie, yeah, they're coming out. Then I hear, no, they're not coming out. But when I'd say, yeah, they're coming out, I'd kind of signal, yes, they're coming out. Hold on one second. And they'd be like waiting around and then, no, they're not coming out. I'm like, they're not coming out. And they're like, well, what are we going to do out there? So something had to happen. And I remember like on the radio, it's like, uh-oh. Everyone was saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So 
I thought, okay, I gotta grab this microphone and give it to these guys and just see what happens. So they did their thing, and then <laughs> when uh, the bad guys all uh, they all come out, <laughs> they, they uh, you know I just had to run and grab the microphone from one to the other. So all my shots were crap anyway, but at least the show got going, and now people want to know what happens next. So I guess I kind of saved the day. <laughs> that night everybody got to go blow some steam off have a few drinks hula hoop it up a bit and have a great time who taught you language it was that dirty mike hughes wasn't it you're a bad influence on you i should have never let you in the dressing room well little lincoln scene jr may or may not move into the wilds man's aquarium we had to find out if his fish will actually harm little lincoln scene jr and if he can't, good, he's gonna live there forever. I love the show. I love the fact that there were some people that I knew from other promotions. Amazing show, it was, it was perfect. It makes me excited that there is actually a promotion that's willing to come to up here, up north, to Bathurst, where we often get overlooked whenever tours happen. And I'm, I'm not really a fan of wrestling per se, but you know, I, I used to watch it for the music that came on, like the intro yeah. themes and stuff. So I, I came up just to see what it was like, and I'm sold. I love it. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It was a hot crowd. I was surprised. It's really great to see. Like I've never seen uh, like cameras like this at a smaller venue. Uh, really good to see like that. Brody came out. Uh, Gary Williams actually looked like he was legitimately pissed off. So that's pretty neat. <laughs> Loved it. Only have two things to say. It was awesome, and the girls were hot. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> The whole town was very supportive of us, you know, from the gyms to the to the bars. Uh, I think everybody had. A, I think that was the funnest night out we had in Bathurst that night. Uh, at the after party there at Ryan's, and uh, it was actually a good time. You know, I got to sit back, you know, drink a few beers, and I was talking to uh, you know some of the production crew and stuff like that. And it, it was really nice to 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 just be worry free, especially after the day of uh, the whole ring truck breaking down and stuff. So. It was a nice, uh, a nice change of pace. You know, I think everybody was so hyped up from the actual wrestling event, it just carried over to the after party at Ryan's. It was, you know, unbelievable after party. We just had the place rocking, and uh, you know, there was just so many things going on. Uh, you know, the production crew was hula hooping. Pete Smith was hula hooping. That was sick. Um, you know, I, I, some some of the younger camera boys, uh, stuff like that. I think they were chasing some cougars around too. It was uh, it was just an unbelievable night. Everybody was so pumped up from the wrestling event. It just spilled over, and we just lit up. We just lit up that bar. <laughs>